Howdy y'all, welcome or welcome back to the channel. I'm James and this is Clearwater Fishing. And today we're talking about Hummingbird's Helix units versus their Solix units. What are the big differences? And if you're looking to buy one, which one should you consider? So as a precursor to this video, I do have a few other videos similar to the subject matter. I do have a Hummingbird Helix buying guide. There are so many different types of Helixes out there. I produced a buying guide to help you guys work your way through which Helix you want to buy if that's the choice you make. And also I have a Hummingbird Apex versus their Solix, kind of comparing their features. Uh, so if you're looking in the upper end market, that is also an option for you. I'll have both of these videos in the cards above and links in the description if that's something you want to check out. So I want to start this video out and start talking about the Hummingbird Solixes. The Solixes come in three sizes. You have the 10 inch, you have the 12 inch, and you have the 15 inch. All of them include the Mega SI Plus. And when you have the Mega SI Plus, you have all the stuff that comes below it. The DI Plus, the DI, the Chirp, Sonars, all that stuff, uh, the mapping. All that is included is just the top feature and then you include everything below it. So one of the key differences between the Solix and the Helix is the Solixes have touch screens. But don't worry if you're you know, kind of keen on about leaving fingerprints on things. Well, you can also have a joystick to control with if that's what you desire. You control your menu options and that kind of thing with the joystick if you so desire. Me personally, I enjoy using touchscreens. Their menu systems seem to be much faster and much easier to use. Now, that doesn't say that the Helix isn't easy to use or using those menus isn't easy. To me, they just seem easier. While we're still on the subject of screens, the Solix, all three sizes support a full HD screen, a 1280 by 800 pixel screen, so you're gonna get high resolutions and high detail quality images on all the sizes. Moving on to SD cards, the Solixes support two SD cards in every unit they have. I think the 10 inch supports two micro SD cards, which nowadays isn't even that big of a deal. You just uh, remove the adapter and plug it in. But just so you know, they all support dual SD cards. While we're talking about SD card slots, let's move on to mapping. Solixes support Lake Master mapping. In my opinion here, Lake Master mapping is second to none. They go out, Hummingbird does, and create their own maps, especially of the larger lakes. And they're starting to move their way down to some of these smaller and smaller lakes, creating more and more definition maps for us. Uh, and if you don't have that option, you can always go out and make your own map. Uh, I forgot the Lake Master name of it at this point in time, but I'll put it down here at the bottom. But you can go out and create your own little map of your own little lake. Once being the top tier of Hummingbird's fish finding units, the Solux does support the one boat network where you can control your Talons, your Raptors, your Oterra or your Ultrax, and have all of those options available for you to control with your head unit. So if you need to go to a waypoint or follow a contour, or even use your uh, talons or your Minn Kota Raptor to spot lock you, uh, whether or not you're on the outboard or sitting at the console and you realize you're drifting. All those options are available to you with the Solix. Before we move on to the Solix's button configuration and its physical layout, I wanna ask you guys to take time and subscribe to the channel. We are growing on YouTube and we do all sorts of fishing related topics, anywhere from how to's to bait reviews, to buying guides, anything to help you guys catch more fish. So make sure you smash that subscribe button and hit that notification bell. And remember, if this video is helpful, leave it a like and it'll help me out. All right, I'm gonna throw up a picture up here and not really the bad kind of throw up, actually just pop it up here. Uh, while I look at my phone here, and we're gonna talk about the physical layout of the Hummingbird Solix. As you can tell, pretty abruptly, it is a very squared pattern. It actually looks really well when you have it flush mounted. It looks uh, really, really tight to the, to the flush. 
and it, and it looks good to me. Uh, looking at the buttons on the right side, you have a knob that twists. Uh, this is used for zooming in and zooming out really fast. Uh, I believe it also can be used in menu options as well. You have a, two buttons there for plus and minus for zooming in or zooming out. You have a check mark and a X. So one's for confirm and one's for uh, escaping. And then right below that is that joystick I was telling you guys about where you can also use that to control everything on your Solix. We have a go to button. So if you want to navigate, you can use that as a feature if you have it connected and networked properly. You have a mark button. So if you need to make a really quick mark uh, for a location where you are, or you lose something, you drop something out of the water, or someone falls out of the boat, you can have a real quick mark. Uh, you have the home screen, you have a menu button there. Those are pretty standard. And you also have a view screen here uh, where you can adjust the type of view you have. You have a power button, obviously. You need to be able to turn this thing on and off. And right below that, you have your SD card slots. You pull that out and you have access to your SD cards. Obviously, the screen is a touch screen, so it's easy to manipulate and move if you need to. Uh, as far as zooming in, zooming out, uh, and doing menu options, it has a very clean look. Uh, the entire surface of the screen is all on one surface, so it's very, very easy to clean. You don't have any hard to reach corners or anything like that. So you don't have to have a, to use your fingernail around the corners or something just to get them clean. Now that we've talked about the Humminbird Solix, let's move on to the Helixes. I only considered the Helixes that support Mega SI Plus in this comparison because I really wanted to keep this an apples to an apple comparison, especially as far as those features go. So, and, and the price ranges and that kind of thing. So Mega SI Plus is supported on eight inches, nine inches, 10 inches, the 12 inch and the 15 inch Helix. You got lots of options on the Helix side as far as sizes. If you uh, really need to move your price range down and still get all the features that you want. As I talked about earlier, the Helix controls off of a control pad. It does not have a touch screen. So you're gonna have to use that to control your menu items, your views and all that kind of thing. You're not gonna be able to use a touch screen. My opinion, I said earlier, seems a little more cumbersome, but it still gets the job done. So if you're out there fishing and you just need a, something that has a little less cost to it and you still want all the same features, hey, uh, using a little bit of a control pad is not that big of a deal. As far as screen resolutions go, the 8, 9, and 10 support a 1024 by 600, not quite HD resolution. Uh, the 12 and the 15, they both support the 1280 by 800, just like the Solixes do. Don't get too discouraged by the numbers I just spouted out as far as the pixels, the height and the width, those are on smaller screens. So your pixel density is gonna be relatively the same. Uh, it's just a little bit harder to see those fine details when you're looking at maybe a single stump or a single rock and be able to distinguish whether that's a rock or a fish or a stump or a lay down, whatever it may be on those smaller screens, you may just have a little more difficult of a time just because it is smaller. So the next little bit is gonna be real similar to the Solix. You have dual SD cards available, whether it's a micro SD card or the full size, it doesn't really matter. They hold the same amount of storage nowadays. So you have those available to run your Lake Master maps on all of these. It also supports the one boat network so if you need to be able to control your Talons, your Raptors, your Altera, your Ultrex, or any of your other Minn Kota or Johnson products, you can freely do that as well if they're networked together. So now we're gonna throw up the uh, Humminbird Helix 12 right here. 
And I'm going to be looking at it on my phone and uh, describing it to you as far as a physical layout. The first thing you might notice here is overall it is not squared bodied as much as the Solix is. And in fact, it's also got a little thicker of a body so it doesn't sit as flush when you flush mount it. The next thing we're going to talk about here is the screen. Looks really clean uh, as far as how it's installed and easy to clean as well because of how the corners are recessed into the, the black matrix there around it, the black border. So you're going to be able to clean the entire screen at ease and uh, keep it really clean from those water spots and those splash spots that you get throughout the day. Uh, the only parts that might be hard to clean are the borders that are next to plastic, which is not a big deal. Uh, you can get your fingernail on there, but overall this you're going to be able to keep this screen really, really clean. Now let's go over the controls over here on the right side. Uh, you have your zoom in, your zoom out uh, over there on the left top. You have a view button. This view button changes the views that are available to you. Uh, now you change which ones it's going to sync through easily through the menu options. But if you're just quickly changing from view to view, you just press that and it moves on to the next type of view. So if you accidentally go past the one you just wanted, you have to go through the entire sequence again. Next is that control pad I was telling you guys about, the left, right, up, down. Really great for working through your menu options or selecting screens for menu options. You have a checkbox there uh, for OK for a selection. You have your mark right below that. So if you need to make that quick waypoint, mark a point for whatever reason, you drop something out of, out of the boat or in the water or someone falls out, quick mark option there. You have a go to button for your navigations. You have your menu on the right and exit on the right. So you have real easy access to all those. And something you don't have on the Solix that you have here on the Helix is you have three buttons here for quick menu items or quick options. So you can link these to views, different menu options, whatever you need them to be. You can simply press this button and it'll immediately go to that view. So you don't have to go through all those views each and every time. Now, Hummingbird felt like they needed to include this because otherwise it's pretty cumbersome to work through the menu every time you wanna change something that you frequently do. So maybe you wanna switch from down imaging to side imaging or side imaging to your map. Those things are easily accessible right there. Uh, right there, kind of hidden to the left, left and bottom of those three quick link buttons is where your SD cards will go. Uh, that lid flips up and that's where you put your SD cards for your Lake Master maps or general storage or whatever you need it to be. And then the power button obviously there is on the bottom to dim your screen or if you need to turn the unit off or put it in sleep mode. So now we're to the point where we talk about the prices, the money, which one you should buy, uh, why you should buy with that one versus this one and all that fun stuff. So if you're looking at cost, the Helix 8 and the Helix 9 are obviously gonna be the most inexpensive ones on this list. The Helix 8 with a transducer, 1200 bucks. The Helix 9 is 1500 bucks. So if you're looking to do that, uh, those are your two, I guess, budget-friendly options to get the Mega SI Plus. Now, when we talk about the 10s, the 12s, and the 15s, I want to talk about them side by side, just because, well, they're size comparable. They actually have a comparable size there. So overall, for each size of Helix, the exact same size of Solux is going to cost you $500 more. So let's uh, go ahead and throw some prices out there. The 10 is going to be $2,000 on the Helix side. So on the Solux side, it's going to be $2,500. The 12 is going to be $2,500 on the Helix. The Solux is going to be three grand. And obviously the Helix 15 is going to be $3,000 and the Solux 15 is going to be $3,500. So like I said, each time just bumps up another 500 bucks. Pretty easy to memorize, although I have a sheet of paper and I can't memorize that. So that's besides the point. Now overall, 
Which one should you get? Well, that's solely up to you here, but I wanna give you some advice. If you're looking for the budget-friendly option and you don't wanna spend more than 1,500 bucks, the eight and the nine are gonna be excellent options for you. Now, if you have the money to go up to that next tier to spend the 2,000 to $3,500 range, well, I'm gonna suggest that you probably go with the Solix, mainly because I like the touchscreen options and being able to move through menus faster, change my views faster. That's just me. But if you wanna save 500 bucks and you don't mind using a control pad, that's fine too. You pick, the, pick up the exact equivalent Helix that you would like, whether it's the, the 12, the 15, or the 10. All those are great options. And in fact, if you just want to save 500 bucks because you know you're not going to use the touchscreen, that's also acceptable as well. Overall, when I really did dig deep, I didn't find any glaring differences between the two other than the touchscreen and the screen resolutions. Now, I did find a little bit of difference in the amp draw. The Helixes did suck a little bit more power. Uh, I don't quite remember what the numbers are on the top of my head. I'm out throw them up here for you guys. Then the Solixes, a little bit more power draw. I'm not exactly sure why and what causes that power draw, especially when they're similar sizes and have almost the exact same functions. In fact, I would expect the Solix to have a little more power draw to power up the touchscreen, but that wasn't the case when I was reviewing this. So if you're actually a little bit concerned about power draw, maybe uh, you should pick up the Solixes instead. But overall, if you pick a Helix, you're gonna be in great hands. If you pick a Solix, you're also gonna be in great hands. All because the features are almost identical. Hopefully this video came out and helped you guys out if you were kind of in the bind between a Helix or a Solix. And if it did help you, or if you learned something from this video, make sure you leave it a thumbs up. But you guys remember, just like always, until next time, get out there and go catch you some fish.